Okay, we're live. What's going on, guys? Uh, this is Tom Radigan uh, from our series, Question About the Magic. And, of course, we got our co-host, DJ, DJ Mega Aim, also known as Anthony. And today we have a great guest. We have our friend Julian Franz, who is a musician. And, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about, like, you know, the uh, music journey of his and also just, you know, his influences and all that. And, uh, you know, let's get started. So, so uh, Julian, thanks for being on here, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so um, let's let's start at the beginning. So like now, like how did your musical journey begin? Well, uh, my musical journey kind of began before I was even born because my parents have been involved musically for a very long time. I mean, my mom has been a music teacher out in Waiting River for since like 1986. And now she owns her own teaching business out out there. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. it's, called, it's called Franz Music Studios, and we teach several different types of instruments. We teach like voice, we even teach piano, we teach drums, guitar, and eventually, when I'm uh, when I'm done with school, uh, I eventually will get out there and start teaching maybe like the saxophone or even the clarinet because I'm a clarinet major, and I kind of the studio kind of feels incomplete without the clarinet. Right. Right. So now, are you like, so then I guess, are you saying, you're, so you're multi-instrumental? Something like that. I mean, I don't just play the clarinet. I have some experience with the piano, and I tend to enjoy the drums. I only play it for fun. And maybe i probably get into the saxophone a little bit, since that's also a reed instrument, and I've always wanted to play the saxophone. Now, do you play guitar at all, or no? Uh Unfortunately, no, because I don't have much experience with playing a string instrument. Okay. Uh, my dad is actually very good at it, so I might need his help to get me to play the guitar. But that's that's up to that's up to me because I've been playing the clarinet since I was nine years old, and I have not skipped a year, so I like to keep going. Right, right. Yeah. No. Um. Like. Uh, no. No. T totally, and all that stuff. So, I mean, um, what has like? What do you think? Like have you learned as being, you know, um, cause you said you're 22, like of like, um, what do you think you've learned from be from your musical training for all those years? Um, wait, can you repeat that one more time? No. Like, what do you think you've learned like from your musical training from like the last few, like, you know, 10 years and all that stuff, you know, playing clarinet or like, you know, or even like the, uh, experience and influence you got from your mother. Uh, it shows that like anybody can play music. I mean, it's you know it's not that hard. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's fun. It's entertaining. It's enjoyable. And you know, like, of course, you know, I don't want to stop there. And you know, the list goes on. I'm trying to think like what what else? Uh, so many different reasons. Yeah. Uh, why it's just yeah you know, it's 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 enjoyed I, I i love to play music I, and eventually uh, when i when i get older i love to teach and i always also enjoy the history of music because that's yeah. something i always in, that's something i always enjoyed you know not just from like the past but also today as well I and mean, i yeah, study yeah. a lot from like what's going on today and everything yeah exactly I mean, like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a big, like, rock connoisseur. Like, I just, like, loved, like, learning the history, even when I was, like, you know, like, in sixth grade and all that stuff. And, like, I, I had, like, a little music experience, which I do want to get back into playing stuff. Like, when I was a kid, I played guitar for a little bit. Um, I'd like to learn again. Um, I'd like to also, you know, like, even play the drums, you know, at one point, you know. And, uh, but, yeah, like, what would you say your uh, musical genre would be? Like, like, what's your favorite musical genre to play? Okay, I think you're cutting out a little. Anthony, are you still there? Yeah. Oh, okay, can you cool. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. You're fine. All right, cool. I guess it's a uh, little cut out. Of... It's all right. Uh, I guess, should we stall the show a little bit before? Yeah. So uh, what's going on, Anthony? Uh, any new music you've been listening to? Um, I finished listening to Kanye West's album. Yeah, I saw a little bit of your review. It was actually pretty funny. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't finish, I didn't finish it, but you I, I wasn't personality. 
Yeah, I wasn't able to finish it because of the phone situation, but like, it sounded like you hated it. Huh? It sounded like you hated it. I don't know. I have mixed feelings on it. Okay. Oh, wait. I think we've got him back. Are you there, Julian? I know he said he got a new phone. So uh, like so. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're yeah, you're still cutting out a little. Oh, okay, I think he's coming back for an, on a different. Oh, are you on a different device now? Yeah, I switched. I switched devices now. I'm just hoping this works. Yeah, this, this, what were you on before? Were you on your phone? I was on my iPhone. Now I'm on my iPad. Okay, yeah, yeah, it might be easier on your iPad. Sometimes the iPhone does not have the best connection. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no. So what I was uh, gonna ask is like, what's your favorite like genre of music to play and to really you know study? I'm into like rock music, but like I also enjoy like jazz, pop, classical, um, 90s hip hop and rap because I think that was like the best era, in my honest opinion, because that's when like the greats were around. Wow. Um, yeah, oh, you so mean that, like those big, are some. Yeah, some of his stuff. I was also into maybe like. Uh, Biggie's uh, Life After Death, and uh, of course, you can't forget about Juicy, so like that's some stuff I listen to. Right, right. And, you know, I wasn't even born when when uh, the two legends passed. Huh. Yeah, I know. That, that That's how I feel. I mean, it's like, it's funny how you say that, like, you think the 90s is the best era, because, like, the 90s is something I want to get more into, but it's like, when you see, like, what 90s had to offer, I mean, it was really some... Uh, you know, interesting stuff, and you know, of course, there was a lot of the tragedy of a lot of musicians that died in the nineties at a young age yeah. and all that stuff. Um, you right. know, I mean, like Selena, of course, you know, Alaya and all that. Yeah, Alaya was. Um, yeah, she died before nine eleven even happened. Yeah, 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 and what's scary is that she was our age when she died. You know, that was yeah, crazy. only twenty two. Yeah, no, 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 it's crazy. And I mean, but, um, you know, I think that's the thing, too. It's interesting, though. I think, like, music has had a lot of tragedy, but I think that's what has kept the music going, I think. I think, like, a lot yeah. of, like, the emotional songs of heartbreak and depression honestly right. work well because I think it can relate to a bunch of people, you know, because we're not always going to be happy. We're not always going to be upbeat, you know, and all that stuff. And depressing music right. can make us feel sometimes even good in a sense, too, you know? Like, it shows yeah. that we're alone, you know? And, um, yeah, no, it, so, like, when you started playing and, like, when you were, like, what was, like, your the musicians you were listening to, like, all the time? Uh, well, I listened to a lot of the Beatles as a kid, and, you know, right. today they're my favorite band. No band's yeah. ever going to top Same. them as my favorite. Same. Uh, uh, I also listened to, let's see, as far as 60s bands go, there was also The Doors. Oh, yeah. You know, they were from, like, the L.A. scene. Yeah, listened to a little bit of maybe like like Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Who. Uh, then there's some '80s stuff like maybe like Duran Duran. Um, looking at my cassette collection because I don't know like what comes to the top of my head. So we also got stuff like we also got stuff like Queen, Van Halen. What oh, list goes on? I mean, I I normally listen to like a lot of hard rock when I was like 15, but then. As soon as I got into like late high school and then early college, I just started listening to more. St uh, I started listening to more like pop music or something like that appeals yeah. to a bigger audience, like something like any anybody can listen, and it's more it, it's like more popular and anybody will know that type of music. Yeah, well, I think like with me, it was like I was listening to stuff like you know, for instance, like um, ten years ago, I really got into like the fifties music because as a kid, I was into like the Beatles, of course. Queen's Crowder, yeah. Grateful Dead. Um, but, like, um, I got more into, like, you know, when I was in sixth grade, like, Elvis, Buddy Holly, Chuck Berry, Little Richard. And um, in high school, I was listening to some of them stuff. I was still, you know, Jackie Wilson, Bobby Darren. Uh, Jackie Wilson, I think, you know, honestly, is one of the best, like, you know, performers of the 60s, I think, and definitely one of the influences of, you know, people like Michael Jackson and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I think like Jackie Wilson's just up there, you know, is up there as just with like James Brown, Michael Jackson, Prince, all that. Yes. And, and um, 
Yeah, yeah, but but it's funny. My senior year, I got more into people like Elton John and uh, Billy Joel. Even though I knew their music before, but I really like became my like fans of their stuff. You know, like like I and I realized like Elton John and Billy Joel are like my other favorite artists, like the Beatles. Like I mean, like my favorite artists, like I think would be like the Beatles, Billy Joel, Elton John, Elvis, The Police, and Buddy Holly. Yeah, like they they're like the greats. Yeah. And, and of course, there's actually, I think, one tape. It's a soundtrack to a movie called American Graffiti that came out in oh. 1973. Oh, I and love like, American that Graffiti. That has, like, nothing but, like, 50s music yeah. and a couple songs from, like, the 60s. So yeah, you got, like, Bill Haley like and his comments were on there. Buddy Holly. Even yeah. the Big Bopper was on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Booker T and the MGs, the Beach Boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a there's a lot of fifties music on that album, and even yeah. though the film takes place in 1962, just you know, people are listening to a lot of fifties music because that was like what was really popular back then. Well, it's funny they played. Um, I remember in American Graffiti, they have like there's at a party they're playing Louie Louie, like you know the version. Yes. The and that version, it's funny because it didn't come out, out until 1963, and right. the song was like around in the fifties, but like apparently, like from what I heard, and I like did some research on it was that like because you know it was known because like you know the, the like the verses like you could not hear and understand and everybody thought and like in the 60s they thought it was like dirty and provocative so there was an fbi investigation on it they oh, found yeah yeah they found nothing but the funniest thing was there is actually a like profanity in it like in the 55 mark uh the drummer dropped his drumsticks so you hear just like i don't know if you remember you hear just like little noise but it's him saying fuck it's like it's not like it's a little subtle but like yeah you can, I, mean, I gotta you, rewatch the movie and like see when that happened. Well, no, 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 not the movie. It's in the song. It's in the song by the oh, Kings. It's in the song, like Louis, Louis. Yeah, like listen yeah. up the listen up the fifty five second mark. That's where I think it is. Yeah, and uh, no, it's, but, it's um, been so long because like you know, there's a lot of ta- uh, all my tapes behind me have been sitting doing nothing for who knows how long, and some yeah. I haven't. Some, you know, I've just bought, just never played. It's just there on display permanently, and then there's others where I just. Maybe you listen to it maybe once or a couple times, then it just sits on there for display. You know, yeah. just that way I can just remember the artist, like remember the time I listened to it. And, you know, who knows? Some of the tapes are even valuable to me. It, yeah, you know, of course. I mean, honestly, like, well, no, it's like, it's so cool that you still have your cassettes because I, I miss that I don't have them anymore because the cassettes are yeah. really great, honestly. And yeah. it's sad that, like, they're not as gl- glorious as they once were, you know, because I, I had, like, I still remember, it's still nostalgic to me, but, like, because I remember, like, you know, you know, like, we talked, because, of course, we actually went to college together, and I remember yeah. that um, you, we were talking about, um, you know, like, somebody was saying something about, like, a got to get you into my life, and, like, said it was from Sergeant Pepper, and you're like, no, it's from Revolver, and then I'm like... It's Revolver. It yeah, and I'm like, okay, it's like I found my first. It's like because like Revolver is like one of my favorite albums, and I remember I think you were talking about that. That was one of your favorite albums yeah. too. I think. Yeah, I've got I've got Revolver on vinyl, and it's it's like the second to last song um, on the album. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny. Um, do you have the cassette version of Revolver? No, I, I don't. Unfortunately, as far as Beatles cassettes, I only got Sgt. Mm-hmm. Pepper, uh, the White Album, and. I, I think the the blue album which was their compilation album they did for oh 60, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well now i uh, just out of curiosity are the track listings the same as the vinyl on the album i not? don't believe so because you know i looked on discogs and i even like did some research on like online about the beatles cassettes i knew many of their many of their albums from like please please me till around revolver had like a totally different track listing and looked at like yeah. please please me and like the first like as soon as you pop the tape inside the cassette player you're hearing the song misery instead of i saw her standing there oh really it's like funny. wait this doesn't sound right it's like well, where's i saw her standing there yeah and you that, find out it's later well that was like um with the um for instance it's funny like with, with how i found out that the track list in order was wrong on the cassette because i guess that was the case because revolver the track listing was completely off and actually it's kind of funny i like listening i put on amazon music the track list in order of it on the cassette because i think it's actually better that way because okay because really? you know how the original album is okay so it's 
I'm going to do this right in the spot. So it's Taxman, Eleanor Rigby. I'm only sleeping. Uh, love you, love to you. Um, oh, yeah, love you too. And then it's like, I think the fifth one is here, there, and everywhere. Six is covering. She said, she said, good day, sunshine. And your broken sin, Dr. Robert, I want to tell you, I've got to get you into my life, and tomorrow never knows. Now, on, yeah. and what's interesting about that is in the album, none of the guys' songs were sung consecutively. Like, they all had, like, it was not in a pattern. They all, like, had it different, you know, like, you know, it's like right. you didn't hear two songs of John in a row. And I think that's what makes the album so perfect in that sense, that it was like there was no dominant force on it. Like, it wasn't a Lennon and McCartney album. It was all of them. Because George yeah. had, like, three songs on it. And, like, his songs, I think, are honestly, you know, stand out really well, especially, like, Taxman and I Want to Tell You. But in yeah. the tape version, um, it's it starts off, and I think it, this is actually a really good way to start it. Instead of Tax Me and starting off the album, start with Good Day Sunshine, because it starts with Good Day Sunshine, and your bird can sing, Dr. Robert. I want to tell you, Tax Man. They put they put in, in yeah, the cassette version, they put most of the songs from John and Paul in a row and George in a row too, you know. And so it's like, right. yes, yeah, so Tax Man, I'm only sleeping. And then you've got like a uh, yellow submarine, and then they put all the Paul songs together at the end, like Eleanor Rigby, uh, here, there, and everywhere for no one, got to get you into my life. Then they go back to the George song, Love You Too, and then they end with both John song, She Said, She Said, and then still ends with Tomorrow Never Knows. Like that's the only yeah. Yeah. Uh, song like track list more that's the same from the actual album yeah i think they also did that because um you know b back then on vinyl you could uh side one could have been longer than side two and they wanted to save tape they wanted to have both sides yeah. equal well, I do think, it, yeah, I do think it is interesting because I remember like when I first found out because I want we lost the, the cassette tape, I think. And then like my grandpa made uh, the album and stuff like that. And he put it in the right order. But the problem was Taxman wasn't on it. It just started with Eleanor Rigney. He forgot to put Taxman on it. And then I realized yeah. that the original order of the album was Taxman was the first song. And in some ways, I thought that was kind of cool because then that would be the only song that, uh, that like only George song that started the album because there really right. was never really technically well the only song that like really Ringo started the album with was, was the Yellow Submarine album but we don't discuss that album because that I don't think is really <laughs> that much of an album really in my yeah, opinion it's pretty much like a soundtrack album yeah, exactly. And it's a compilation compilation because it's like it's stuff from Revolver. It's like one song from Revolver and one from Magical Mystery Tour. And then the rest are like, you know, four like I think those will be good as like four singles because like hey Bulldog is great and then uh George's stuff like Northern Song is great on that. Yeah, and then you have George Martin's score uh on Oh yeah, song. yeah. And you know an album that I've always loved of the Beatles that was the American one was the um, what do you call it? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yesterday and today, which was so controversial because the album cover. Yeah, the butcher cover. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny how they had to change that to Paul in the suitcase. But it's funny because I feel like that's like the only other, the only like real American uh, album that was really good in a sense. Because what was cool about it was that it was the like it had songs from Revolver before the album was actually released uh, in right. August because i think it came out in april i think and then like yeah the album didn't come out until like august the 66 all right it came out before revolver and you know and, and since there was like three tracks on revolver that was on yesterday and today the american version of revolver had 11 tracks instead of 14 yeah yeah they cut out all the john stuff yeah yeah on the american yeah version. i mean it's I funny, like, the u.s I... version of revolver it only has 11 tracks instead of the 14 yeah that came out my friend track. uh for uh, my birthday one time gave me a, a, a vinyl version of revolver and i realized it was the american version because and your bird can sing tomorrow never knows and dr robert were not on it right and yeah, yeah, and then I realized that I looked up why because they were on the you know yeah of course the they're on yesterday and today. And what's cool about the yesterday and today is that like that George only has one song, but they give Ringo two songs on that album. <laughs> usually, like you know, like Ringo only had one song, and George always was the one with the two songs. Yeah, and then everything else is Lennon McCartney. Yeah, and it's like sometimes there was an album where George just had one song. Sometimes there was an album that Ringo just didn't sing on. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But it, no, I mean, it worked well. I mean, they all had their parts and all their talents. I mean, everybody talks about the songwriting and the evolution of what they did. But I think nobody gives that much credit to their actual, like, musicianship and, like, their talents in that sense, I feel like, you know? Right. But, yeah. 
But um, like uh, just out of curiosity, like um, because I've been listening to like uh, stuff from the seventies lately, more of like you can get more into like kind of like you know more obscure kind of rock. Are you? Do you know anything about the group of Little Feet? I don't, as a matter of fact. Okay, no, or like uh, Steely Dan. Are you a fan of that by any chance? I've heard of Steely Dan. I think I've listened to some of their material from like the seventies. Yeah, much, I mean. Though. They have some big commercial hits, like, you know, of course, like, Do It Again, Reeling in the Years, and Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Yeah. But, yeah, no, um, but, um, what was I going to say? So, um, you know, um, how do you think, though, that music kind of inspires you as a musician, you know? Pardon? No, like, how, do, how does that music kind of, like, inspire you as a musician to keep going forward, you know? Uh. T- to, it, it kind of inspires me because there's, you know, there's, you know, music changes. Got to get, uh, got to get used to the changes. Some of it's good, and you know, like influence, like kind of influence the good stuff instead of like the bad stuff. And also, kind of tells me to. Um, uh, also, some music, you know, that came out then. You know that also has a message uh, to to many yeah. to many people. I mean, I don't know if you know many people like understand like the meanings of many songs, but like in every song, there's pretty much a message to people, whether if it's like a good message or like a bad message. Yeah. And and sometimes like you know there was back then I didn't really un- didn't really like understand or learn about meanings of many songs. I just listen to it and then you know kind of went on with my life and then next you know many years later i come back to it and then uh, and then i find out that there's a meaning to it and then it gets applied to in my life yeah yeah no music could definitely uh you know affect your life and you know and, and definitely in a positive way too yeah yeah you know there's there's many beatles hits that have like have um so many so many beatles hits have like a, a meaning to me how many years later that yeah. i just never never like felt the meaning when i was much younger now you've mentioned you played saxophone right um i was going to like get into saxophone at one point like I, i'm still playing the clarinet today okay okay and like, like is there any like musician that like inspired you to play like the clarinet like is there any musician you look up to for that well um what kind of got me into the clarinet was back in third grade, we used to play an instrument called the recorder, which was oh, like right, a bass yeah, instrument. And the instrument that was kind of similar to it was the clarinet. So it kind of pretty much the playing the recorder got me into clarinet. Interesting. And like, would you say that, that like out of all the instruments you've played, like that's your favorite, like that's the one that you feel the most comfortable with? So far, yes, because you know it's 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 a little challenging to play. But since I played it for over like thirteen years, I kind of know how to play the clarinet. And right, of course, right. I have of course I hire private instructors um, or private um, private teachers to help me you know, get better at the instrument. Because I know there's right. probably other people out there that are much better at me. You know, they could play like level six beyond and you know nisma and like sometimes I'm, i struggle with the type of music so i always like to play the hard stuff just to get better and the yeah, only way i can yeah. do that is i gotta hire private tutors or uh, yeah. private teachers to help me get there yeah definitely yeah because it, it and it's cool and it's cool that like you are like you know like kind of like trained as a musician because you know there are some big musicians like even like the beatles like Paul, like i was just watching him with paul mccartney that like, he was never trained in any of the music music that he played you know yeah, stuff. like, like he, he, he self-taught everything. Yeah, and it's funny he was saying that, like, yeah, and like Jimmy Fallon made a joke saying, like, 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 couldn't, like, do you ever imagine like what your music could have been if you were classically trained? And he goes, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he goes, like, I don't know, maybe I'll still learn, maybe I need lessons. He's like, yeah, you never yeah. know. Yeah, no, no, you never, you, you never do know. And I mean, like, honestly, like, I've always found it inter- interesting of the people that were self-taught. You know? I think that's like yeah. I don't think that's something I could do, you know. It's like you, you know, it's interesting too because that there are some musicians like you know that don't even know how to play chords, you know. They just you know they do it from memory. Yeah, you know? yeah and, you know that's why they gotta study like music theory to understand the chords. Of, you know, if they want to know like a C chord, and 
they got either like take the course or they can just play like C E and G on the piano. And like there's your C chord. Yeah, exactly. Now, like just out of curiosity, because like, so you play in a jazz band, right? Or I'm involved in the symphonic band as a matter of fact. And okay. I have not, I have not skipped a semester of symphonic band. I've pretty much been playing every, I've been pretty much playing in every single semester that I've been at Suffolk and even before Suffolk when I was in like high school or middle school and even in even in fourth and fifth grade in elementary school I was always playing the clarinet. Interesting. And, you know, of course you can't get used to the easy stuff. You gotta get you gotta get used to the harder stuff too. So that's the only way you get better. So now you do the symphonic stuff from uh, Suffolk County Community College? Yes, and okay. th- and this semester I'm going to be joining the jazz ensemble, and oh, nice. um, I'll also be playing the I'll also be playing the clarinet because um, they don't really have that many people in jazz band, so they're they said uh, want to play the clarinet and see if it, how it works out. And I said sure, so I'll do it. So I'm part of two ensembles this year. Oh, that's awesome. And, um, like, so what was, what was I going to say is like, now have you, you thought of like, do you uh, sing by any chance or like write your own music? Some, uh, sometimes, I mean, I, I know how, I know how to sing scales, whether it be like major or minor scales, uh, melodic's a little tricky for me. Um, and as far as, as far as like other songs go, maybe if I was like, I can definitely sing like Beatles hits, like, Right. I've listened to it many times and like without even looking at sheet music, I can pretty much sing note for note and word for word. Yeah. So it's pretty much based through memory and I just have to know like where my uh, vocal range is. I know yeah. I can't sing I can't sing as high as Freddie Mercury as far as yeah. I know. Kind of like a baritone, something like that. Now just out of curiosity, like do you ever like, you know, like when you, you sing or something like that, when you sing from like, cause like, I know it's like for myself, cause like, I'm not really like, I'm, I'm not like a professional singer or like really playing time. I like sing on my own time. Like, you know, in the shower, of course, or just like sing when I listen to music. But, um, you know, um, yeah, like, I mean, I did choir when I was in uh, middle school and all that stuff. And I was able to do a solo at one point there, like a little solo and all that. But um, the thing, like, I think what I noticed when I, listen to music and sing a song, I always end up mimicking the artist's, like, voice in a sense. Do you end up, like, doing that by any chance? Like, by like, is it more of, like, a by act, like, in, not unintentional? Well, it depends if it, it depends if the artist is, like, one of my favorites. Right. Like, does it, like, just, like, does it, like, so, like, let's say, like, you're listening to, like, a Frank Sinatra song, and then it's, like, is it, like, unintentional sometimes, like, that you sound like him doing, like, I've got you under my skin. <laughs> Oh uh, well, I I don't I don't know about Frank Sinatra. I mean, I I don't really imitate him if I want to sing like New York, New York. I mean, yeah, I just yeah. want to use my own voice if I sing that. Right. But like maybe other stuff, like maybe if I want to listen to like sing like Beatles, maybe I'll try to sound a little bit like Paul. Yeah, yeah on his songs or yeah, maybe George if I if I got the accent down, maybe sound a little bit like him. Yeah, it's funny. Everybody talks about that George is the hardest uh, Beatle to do as an impression. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like you got to do, like, because George sounds a little like John, because I remember as a kid, I, I would sometimes get mixed up, like, if it's George or Johnson. And George has a little bit of, like, John's voice, but it's a little bit, I think, on a higher octave, I think, you know, like, when he talks and stuff like that. John is very, a little bit lower, and, you know, he, he talks like this, and, you know, you know, and the papers. I'm, I'm not going to do, like, an impression and, and you know, do a... Because I, I can sometimes do a good impression, like, when I feel like I'm on the spot of it, but, like, I don't think I can do it now. Yeah, it's it's all right. I mean, I can always I can always look them up some other time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, but um, but yeah, no. Uh, Anthony, is there any questions you have for our guest? Oh, okay. yeah. So, like, what made you want to do music in general? What made me want to do music in general? Well, I come from a yeah. musical family. I mean, everyone in my family has musical talent. I mean, my. I mean, as far as my brother goes, I mean, he's going to, um, he's going to go for music directing. I mean, he's been, he's been playing music in a lot of like stage productions. You know, if there's like a musical, he would be involved in like the uh, pit orchestra and he'd be music directing the pit orchestra. And, you know, that's what he wants to do, music direct. And as far as my sister goes, she's a music teacher at Seneca. 
Um, so she pretty much like followed in my mom's footsteps as a music teacher. Uh, as far as my dad goes, he's good at the guitar, and me, I'm good with the clarinet, and I'm going to get into maybe hopefully conducting the bands, because I know my uncle, one of my uncles is actually a uh, band director in the Smithtown district, so I know a lot of people in my family are involved with music, and I thought about doing the same, so I just come from a musical background, and I figured I'd follow with them. All right. Is there any artists like right now that you that you enjoy listening to, or is just listening to? Would it be general? like present artist, like artists from like today, or like artists from like uh, way back when? Uh, either one. Uh, I, I like a mix of both. I kind of like prefer like the old stuff, but I also I also enjoy some new stuff from today. I mean, there's um, there's I think it was one artist. I think it's Coldplay that I sometimes we'll listen to we haven't gone over them like they're kind of from the present day and i i enjoy their music and i feel like i should listen to i feel like i should listen to more of the present day stuff because i know i'm spending more time on the old stuff that way i can fit in with the older crowd okay so i know a lot a lot of past artists are gone and you know you know i, f I feel like i should you know yeah, enjoy, enjoy a mix of both yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, I mean, I... oh, sorry, what were you saying, Anthony? Uh, I, I was just gonna say, you, should, you know, I guess just listen to whatever it is that you want to listen to. Don't, yeah, like, like, whatever, like, whatever I listen to is pretty much like what I influence as long as I like it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, totally, dude. I mean, like, for instance, like with me, like, I don't really like listen to like new stuff going out, like, you know, everybody's talking about the Kanye West album, like, I'm not like, you know, I mean, that's not me, you know, I just like listen to more stuff from like, like stuff that like I'm into, like, you know, like 60s, 70s, like, I'm really, I've been getting really into the group, the band, and uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Like that stuff, yeah. like been really like I've just like, been listening to a lot of their albums. I mean, especially their like both of those uh, both of those groups. Like their first two albums were like their biggest ones, honestly. Yeah, it had like in, insane amount of hits on both of those albums. You know, like just like yeah. a lot of those songs are just like so prolific for for both of them. Like I mean, both of those like it's like it shows you that like music can be like more than like just like you know love you so much. I mean, love you till the cows come home. You know. Yeah, it can have several different meanings. I mean, there's there's also those music. Uh, there's also those like hard rock or heavy metal bands will have like the sci-fi lyrics. Yeah. Uh, sometimes sometimes they'll have like the love or romance themes, but but that's something like anybody can listen to. And even if you go into a store, you'll hear a lot of like uh, songs that have to deal with like like everyday issues or maybe even love and romance, uh, some stuff like that. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, 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 no, no. Um, Anthony, is there anything else you'd like to ask our guest? Oh, not at the moment. Okay. Um, do you have any um future projects coming up, Julian? Or um, uh, uh, future projects? Oh man. Um, <laughs> just just wondering, you know. Is, I know I'm almost done with. I'm. I have one more year of Suffolk, yeah. then I gotta figure out what I want to do with my life and yeah, you know, yeah, one yeah. Project that's been hidden in my mind that I guess we can go back to which was the senior trip videos maybe making a map maybe making some music out of that okay uh, cool if I was going to make a movie out of that if I was going to like use music from like other people or like what's over here right. I have to pay the band and their record company royalties and Right now, I don't have a budget for that, so I guess making my own music would probably save some money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's a cool way to start. And there's so many ways that you can self-publish your music, you know, on so many of these sites. You know, I mean, you got yeah. SoundCloud, all that stuff. And no, I mean, I mean, that'd be really cool. I mean, yeah. And honestly, like, so what it sounds like what you're saying is like because I know we talked earlier about you had some film footage from like you know like a few years ago, and like that yeah. would work and stuff like that. So you're saying like do like a music like concept album. Something like yes, yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, I, there is a story involved. I mean, you know, it's basically how a vacation or trip happens, like you know, like the starts of the beginning where you're leaving, and you know, the trip end, uh, the album ends, like the trip is over, and you're coming home, going 
back to your daily lives and everything. And, you know, we have, I have to figure out like a concept of what, what we're going to put in uh, the album. Cause you know, we have a lot of adventure in, uh, in this film. Um, you know, we're going to like a theme park or walking around Washington DC, seeing all these monuments and all these parks that are on the national register, these points of interest that I have to visit. So like, yeah, there's definitely a story to be told in, um, in this, um, uh, upcoming film that i'm interested in and of course i want to make i want to make it like my own album so that could probably yeah, save me some yeah totally yeah it's all that's awesome dude yeah well, well good good luck to that and uh, oh should we also before um mention that you actually have an imdb page because you were an extra in a film right yes i was an extra in deck the heart when um I was coming home from church one day and we had to go to my, uh, we had to go to my mom's teaching studio out East because they were doing a film shoot and I forgot, I forgot what scene it was in because they didn't release the film yet. And the director of the film told me to sit down and sit in the background. And I was like, okay. And I did that for about an hour, two hours. And then my, and then, you know, many months later, my mom said, you know, that movie that they, filmed out east they said well they're done with that so i looked looked up that movie found out there was an imdb page for that scroll down to the cast and i found my name there and then you know i clicked on it and it said julian franz is an actor known for imdb so it's like i looked at that page and i was like you know what i want to claim that page and i want to want to make that page mine so then next you know after i after i claimed that page i edited my edited a picture of myself and then Next, you know, I sent them my birth date. I had to send in, like, I had to send, like, a copy of proof that I was born and born in this place. And then, next, you know, anyone can know, anyone can see if they view my page that I was born a certain day, you know, 1999. Wow. And they also have a picture of me. And I even shared it on Facebook. And now I have people like you saying, oh, you got an IMDb page. And then there was another person who said, how did you get a picture on there? And I told him, it's like, you got to do this. And you say you got to pay for it, though, right? You're paying like um, monthly. Yeah, IMDb Pro. Um, that, that I had to get a subscription to IMDb Pro, and I, it's only like 150 a year. I know it's a lot, but I mean, I have a budget for it, and I can recycle 3,000 bottles to preserve, just just so I can let people know when I was born. Wow. No, that that's it. That's interesting now. And um are you looking like are you looking forward to like do you want to act in the future or like get into the Hollywood? Maybe on the maybe on the side. Maybe there's something to do like on the side um, on top of my music cuz I know music's my priority and maybe like acting's like on the side cuz I know there's a lot of musicians out there who also are in oh, movies. Of course. Have you thought of like doing like you know going into the movie business doing like music soundtracks or no? Um, not yet. I just want to see like how my movie goes. Right. Because right. I, I right. know I'm I'm also I'm also supposed to direct it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm supposed to be in it and I'm supposed to direct it. And I'm supposed to make music for it. So like I already have too many tasks. Right. Right. So like I'm yeah. I'm responsible for pretty much everything. So I just want to see like how this goes first. Maybe another course, year or two before you finally get to before everyone finally gets to see it. Yeah. Do you have like a release date for the movie or pardon? Do you have like a release date? Probably next year or twenty twenty three. Wow. And I might just put it I might just put it just straight to YouTube. Um that way everyone can just you know view it there because when the COVID hit uh, pretty much all the film studios were pushing everything to just get released to like streaming platforms. And I said, well, there's a streaming platform I have access to and I can just upload to YouTube. So I said, I can just do that. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it'll be like more of like an independent filmmaker, don't be involved. Something in like that. I'm going to start off as independent and then we'll see what happens. You know what? That works the best at sometimes. I mean, I know people, like even like for instance, like I had on like a, a guest a few uh, weeks ago who talked about even as a musician, he never wants to be a part of a label. You know, he doesn't want that 360 thing. You know, he wants like that independent control, which I get, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then, then there's and then there's this talk about uh, record labels, and then 
uh, not too long ago, I think two years ago, we learned about the fire that happened at uh, Universal oh. Studios. Yeah, that happened about like, at, I think, like 2008, I think, right? 2008. That Yeah, that's what it was. Like anyone who was signed to MCA, Geffen, Interscope, uh, it was uh, Chess. What about uh, Buddy Holly's record? Yeah, they had Buddy Holly stuff. Every Brothers got uh, ruined, got ruined too. Yeah, El- uh, even some Elton John stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think like, a lot of artists. Uh, yeah, any, anyone who anyone whose records were owned by UMG were pretty much burned. This was 2008, and, and of course, ca- uh, Capitol Records are is now owned by Universal, but that was that was like after the fire. So, so you know, their material is unaffected. But now we're talking about stuff that was in Universal when yeah. the fire happened. Well, I guess what it means is that, like, you know, because even though you can still hear those songs, you just... You're never going to hear the originals again. Yeah. And that's why many, many albums uh, from, like, the 80s or even 90s, they're only just going to get one issue, and that's it. And uh, there's going to be there's gonna be no such thing as a remaster or bonus edition or, like, instrumental edition. It's like, that's all gone. Yeah. No. And then there's stuff that never even came out, which is gone too, which is you know very sad. Yeah. Well, this is like it's a little. This is a little like off. So this is more of like the media thing, but it happened sort of like with uh, Johnny Carson, you know, the guy who was the like one of the biggest Tonight Show hosts before Jay Leno and of course Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. But right. um, he um, no, like apparently I think there was a guy in the studio, and I think this guy might have done it as a personal motive. I heard or something like that. But a lot of the original Johnny, because Johnny Carson was originally did his show in New York. But then, you know, moved out to California in the 70s. But a lot of the New York shows got erased, apparently, you know. Yeah. And we're, we're like, and we're gone, too. Like, the original, like, like the original stuff from, like, the, the early 60s. Because the show started in 62. So a right. lot of, like, the original New York clips are gone, you know. Yeah, and that's, that's sad. It's like, why are we erasing stuff that's important? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, stuff I know. That, like, ev- that, like, everyone's got to know. Well, it's like yeah, there's no and, evidence to show. And you know what's weird, like with certain company stuff and how they do stuff. For instance, like I don't know if you know the show Murphy Brown. Never heard of it. It was a show. It was a big show in like the late eighties. You know, it was like just as big as a show like Seinfeld and Friends. But um, Murphy Brown, apparently, from what I heard, they're no longer like you cannot find it on the streaming service because the reason why is because there's too many copyrighted material, and I think that it expired the license and they're not renewing it like for so they can't put it on streaming services because and a lot of and honestly like you could watch it but they would just have to edit a lot of the musical stuff out but a lot of the music was the best part because the main character was a huge aretha franklin fan and there's a lot of her versions of her doing you make me feel like an ad for woman and there's actually if you look at it on youtube it's actually really cool where aretha franklin actually is in the episode and she does it because candace Bergen was the star of it and she does a duet with her well she like like aretha franklin plays uh you make me feel like an ad for woman on piano and uh you know Casper is just watching her like in awe and all that stuff and it's like it's just like if they edited that stuff out in a streaming service it just it would not be that good though you know yeah yeah i get what you're saying so it's just it's just a shame to see like all that footage go yeah exactly footage disappearing it's you know it's crazy yeah and you know i have i have um and getting off topic with the videos i filmed in 2017 during this trip I have like four or five backups of the original, of the of the original like negative, or I don't know if I should really say negative because it wasn't shot on movie theater film. Four backups of the original footage that's uncompressed, you know, sitting on several different drives, you know, in my house. So yeah. it's like it's telling you like this footage is precious and I cannot lose it. Right, right. Well, no, so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So like I. And unfortunately, they all sit in this house. Like, like you got to find like other places to put it. Like, I can't just leave it here. I got to maybe put it out at the studio, or maybe even find like a storage unit. I could just put one piece of uh, electronic to just sit there and take it out if I need it. You know, that way the footage doesn't die. Yeah, of course. Because, yeah, you know, I've been, I, I've, I've been like making new backups every, every time I get like a new device that has like 
512 gigs or a terabyte because the film footage i think is 400 gigs we shot about 21 hours and it's showing you like i, I do not want to lose this footage and like no. it's pr- my my dream is pretty much shattered if that happens yeah of course of course because it's a part it's a part of not just nostalgia but a type of art form that you want expressed to you know the world that's like your state as what yeah i believe right that's correct Interesting. So, like, it, yeah. so it's like it's my responsibility to make sure it doesn't disappear of course of course so like it's like if i get a new laptop i immediately immediately make a new backup right away if i get yeah. a new iphone pro that has like a terabyte of storage copy all the videos right there same with the same with the micro sd card if i get like a new micro sd card that has a terabyte i copy it right there because like i said i am not losing this footage right and there's so many precious moments in those videos that are like priceless, like like seeing me from like at like 18 years old and, yeah. and just enjoying like one of the greatest trips I ever did before you know college happened. So and what was the trip exactly? Like where'd you go? Uh, it was my uh, senior trip that happened in high school. So okay. we went to basically Washington D.C. and then we oh, nice. spent a day at Bush Gardens and then another day in washington dc oh interesting and i have i like i said i have i have so much footage uh from the trips like i never shot this much in my life yeah and i i even spent i even spent like a year preparing for this you know saving up buying 4k cameras buying a gopro that recorded in 4k because the whole film the whole trip was shot in 4k video quality as a matter of fact interesting and and you know it the the format was still in its infancy when the trip was filmed right right so right. it's 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 like saying that like we can do something with this it's not like we can't yeah of course no yeah, yeah. but um no no it's very interesting i mean good luck with the project i mean um it sounds yeah, like the stuff that you're doing with the music is great and you know it's very personal and you know it seems like you're very connected with what you're doing and good luck with uh you know the jazz band uh sym- the symphonic uh or like organization you're involved in yeah thank you so symphonic band is symphonic band. Fact, that's- i know i was like i was saying it wrong i was like okay yeah i'm like i know that it, it's all right it's I, it's been it's been a while i have an off night so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and of course and of course i'm like back to school already so since labor day is over yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because it's like I'm actually involved in an organization at my school, uh, the Digital Music Association, which I have stuff on YouTube channel. About. I'm a director of correspondence, and basically, you know, we just go over at the like basically what it is. It's a pa- it's a club about like the passion of music, you know, um, you know, getting people involved, like you know, like getting artists involved, you know, musicians, you know, come and all that stuff, you know, show their work, you know, find a way to communicate with people and all that stuff. We're just talking about the right. passion of like you know rock country all that stuff or rap and all that stuff you know and yeah. uh, it's a real cool organization uh, that was started a few years ago and you know I'm, gl- I'm glad that i'm a part of it so you know it works pretty well and all that stuff too we have stuff on on youtube and well we have stuff on instagram and i have like a, a few youtube clips about it cool but uh but yeah no 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 um but yeah no i mean what you're doing it seems like really good um i look forward to uh the, the projects you have coming out and uh is there anything else you want to say anthony before um we end um i was gonna ask before like i guess with the film thing like was you originally gonna plan it like put on in the theaters or was you always gonna do like uh, what was the question no I was, the question was like like um in regards to the film you're making, was you originally going to put it in in a theater prior to? No, I think it was just going to go to YouTube. Because, oh. uh, you know, I could just upload anything and then just send the links to everyone and then they can view it. So it's pretty much like, an, it's pretty much just independent. Well, you can always put it in Huntington. There's the Cinema Arts Center. You can always screen it there as well. Yeah, and, or maybe like at a film festival. And it's not that much of a price either. All I think all you have to do is just pay two dollars for a membership of the thing, and you can be, and you can screen anything there. Awesome. Yeah, I got I, I got to look into that sometime. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely be something to check out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, no, well, I, I look forward to that. And uh, yeah, I guess if there's nothing else anybody's got to say, I guess we'll end it for the night.
All right. Oh. It's just, I'm just hoping IMD will approve my independent production. <laughs> yeah. That, that way when it's that way, when the project's complete, we can, um, give myself another credit and then uh, next you know all my friends that were in the film uh, many years ago maybe they'll have their own pages too who knows yeah. maybe, we'll, maybe we'll maybe we'll get them their own pictures and birth dates just like i did yeah yeah definitely we'll check out his imdb page and all that and do you have any other, uh, have any other like socials that you want to put out there yeah anything you want to promote uh socials like, like any kind of like internet stuff like youtube stuff do you want like on a link or something uh, uh nintendo vcs 11 on youtube uh you can look up julian franz on imdb okay. um i have a be unfortunately i have a beard but it, you when you click on that page and you look for april 14th 1999 is my birthday you will be in the right place um, you can also follow me on instagram as franz the marathoner since i do a lot of running Oh, right. Also music by passion, so like I put up a mix of both. You can also find me on Facebook. You just type in Julian Franz. Quote, my IMDB page profile picture is also the same on Facebook. So uh, if you if you see both uh, profiles pictures the same, then that's me. All right. Um, Sounds good. To see, like, what else? Um, uh, Julian underscore Franz on Snapchat. Okay. Yeah, and like, I last... think that's I think that's everything as far as social media goes. If anything right, so else comes up, I'll check let those you know. out and uh, send me the links on send me the links that you want me to uh, put on the channel. And I'll DA All you right, we'll do. Know. And I'm lastly, cool. um, you know, if you ever want to obviously come back, you always can, and also do my own show with Tom sometimes. Yeah, that's that's like partially music based. Yeah, I'm his co-host on that show. <laughs> <laughs> somewhat yeah we mean somewhat <laughs> yeah it's, it's called always late to everything do like anime video games and music and whatever so if you have awesome any time, you can jump on yeah. that too awesome looking forward to seeing it yeah all right sounds good all right. Well, um, yeah, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Uh, this, Even though if you didn't uh, watch this live, it's live. You can always watch it recorded, all that stuff. Um, these interviews are definitely interesting if you want to know about uh, specific musicians, especially from, you know, like my area in Long Island. Of course, you know, I'm upstate at the moment. Um, but, you know, like any, you know, it's, it's interesting to check these musicians out and definitely support them and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, no, so... Uh, you know, also I have my Facebook group page. I also have a discord that I've uh, just started. So if you guys want to be involved in that, uh, you are welcome to as well. I will put that in the link as well. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. So, uh, you know, hit that like button and see you guys in the next live interview. Bye. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Glad to be on. I'm glad that you were on, Julian. It's great.